So let's look at a simple class, like how, how we can define a class. So the example given in the book is that you are going to create a uh, counter or a tally counter, meaning that a class that can model a mechanical device that is used to count people, for instance. So all you have to do is plus one, plus one, plus one, like a new person comes, you just click plus and uh, the counter is increasing. So essentially we are creating a uh, tally counter. Example is people getting on a bus, people getting off a bus, uh, how many people attended a concert and so on. Okay. So first thing is you take your problem and then you say or decide what it needs to do. Okay. So our program should increment the tally and give us the current total at a specific time instance. Right? Those are the two major functionalities. Okay. So how can we do that? So let's say we have, I mean, currently we have not, but let's say we have created the counter class. Okay. Now what you can do is if you remember I said that you call the methods of a class using an object. So the first thing is when you need what you need to do is create a uh, object. Okay. When you create an object in programming languages that's called creating an instance of a class. Coming back to our students example, student and class example. So we have defined a class in which students can exist with these, 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 these properties and do, do these functions. When student A is created, student A is an instance of the class. When student B and C and D get created, those are the new instances of the same class, okay? So in our case, first, let's say this counter class is created. We create an instance by just giving it a name. So now with this object called tally, we can call the functions. Now what are our functions? Let's say we have to reset the counter and on each click, something should happen. What is that happening is that that will create the, or that will increase the counter, right? How it does that? The object does not need to worry about that. So in our case, we are saying this object or instance called tally, just go and click the counter, okay? Do we need to provide any inputs? Not for reset, not for this method. So what these two methods are doing, one is resetting uh, the tally because of this object. And similarly here, you're clicking it twice, right? So now your value of the counter has been first line zero, then it's one, now it's two. When you call the other function, let's say get value, so that variable result should have two in it because you've clicked it twice. If you click it again, you get the value called the same function, you will get an updated value. How the class or the methods are doing their job the object tally does not care about that, right? And this is the essence of object-oriented programming, that the interface says that you can call the reset function, you can call the click function, you can call the get value function. What's happening inside those functions, how those values are stored, etc. the object, which in case is named tally here, does not know and does not need to know, okay? So the object basically stores the instance variables, meaning when you create an object, it creates a uh, space inside memory for that object. So when we do this thing, what happens is that inside uh, the memory, a place is defined for that 
tally object. So for example, let's say this is the, the whole computer memory. Let's say so inside memory, a new section is created for the uh, tally object. Okay, so tally. So here it will have its own data properties. Remember the student's height, weight that it can set and it will have certain methods available to it that it can work on, okay? So let's say this is the reset method. This is the uh, click method. So this is click, this is uh, reset. You may have another method doing something uh, which was that get value so I'm just writing GV get value and so on and these are the data that these functions can work on okay so doing this this space is created inside memory and this is then the instance if you create another object it will have its own space with the same structure in it okay like for space for data then space for functions. So the same kind of structure will be in there. So looking and working on the same things, but this is object one, this is object two, and they have their own space inside memory. Same properties, right? But uh, this property is different from this property. And we will see like when we, uh, then things may become uh, easier. So let's say here we have created two objects of the same class. So counter is the class we have created. One is called concert counter. The other is called a boarding counter. They have the same uh, variables that they can work on. For instance, the variable in this case is defined as value. Is this value the same as this value? No, because this is for concert counter, this value is for boarding counter. Okay, and they may have different values. This may have four, this may have uh, 100 or whatever. Okay. Same name, same name of the class and the object, but different names of the objects. So class and the variable inside are same, but the object name makes these different because the compiler understands that this value is to be stored in a different memory location, this value is to be stored in a different memory location, okay? And then, uh, so I'm thinking whether I should go in the details. So instance variables are part of implementation details. Yes, and they should be hidden. Okay, well and good. That we already talked about that, what that hiding means, that it, it means encapsulation. Okay, secondly, uh, some programming languages, uh, differentiate between what's private and what's public to a class. In Python, it does not enforce this. So if you're coming from another programming language, that's the only caveat or that's the only difference that in C++ or C Sharp, you can have public and private, they're different. In Python, you can still access the private things, but it's highly discouraged and you should know, not do it. And when we talk about those things, uh, then it'll become more clear when we see through those examples. Then how do you create methods of a given class? So they're defined inside in the class body. What that means we'll look, so first you have to define a class and inside that, you will define the methods that belong to a given class. And we will see the example. 
and the method or the function is defined in the same way as we have seen before like with the def keyword with the colon and so on tab and so on one additional thing that we can see here is the keyword cell okay so what is self? So self is just an additional parameter. So the first parameter of a method is self and it is self always. Okay. Even if the function does not return anything, it will have a parameter called self. Okay. What does self mean? So let me go back to this example. So when we say tally dot uh, click, and this is let's say T2 is the name of the object. And then when we say dot click function, so they're both using the click function but this click function is for this object right so that is what self means that click it for myself the data that's associated with this self so this data or these small blocks are associated with a self that myself so this object is saying dot click and in the click is already written self that don't go and interact with any other objects data. Talk with your own data. So that essentially what the self keyword does. Uh, if you don't understand self for now, just remember that each method that you define to be a part of a class will have a self written in it by default. And any variable that you want to set in the class, it will have a self dot with it. Okay, so you will not have any variable other than a self dot and then the variable name. Okay. So underscore value is the name of the variable. Okay. So we could have just said underscore value equals underscore value plus one. But we say no in programming in Python classes, you have to write a self and a dot and then the uh, variable name, which in this case is called underscore value. Underscore is nothing special, it's just another character. Okay. So with this method, under, uh, like click, it just increases that value by one. So you can think of this underscore value as being one of these boxes. So this is called underscore value. This first box. Okay. Let's see. So underscore value is this box. So the click function is just adding that, adding one to that value, whatever that was, and storing it in the same place. That's it, right? So which instance variable again, one belonging to that object, I just showed you graphically what the, that means. It's advancing, yes. Um, you have to give the object name dot click like tally dot click or concert counter or boarding counter and only that method will work for that function okay similarly this uh, uh, slide is just showing you how encapsulation works like what's happening inside the function we are not concerned we just give it dot get value and we get some value What's happening inside the function, we don't care about, okay? So let's 
look at a sample program okay so in this case what the book did is that it created two files okay one is a counter.py and the other is i think uh, uh, a driver function or drive driver or something like that but in our case we don't need to do that we can do everything in one python class if we do it in one program all this code should be written up here okay and then your implementation which this first line exactly does that for instance when we say from counter import counter with a capital C so this is the dot py file or your Python file from this file import this class e -S -S. Okay. so py file import this class what is that class it's defined here so this is how a class is defined. The keyword is class. You give the name of a class. In this case, we called it counter with a capital C. You put a colon, and then you put a tab. I'm just ignoring the comments. You put a tab, and then you have some methods defined in the class. Okay. What are those methods? We are working on an object called, oh, sorry, a variable called underscore value. That's the name of the variable. And each function does something. And you should be able to understand what they are doing. So reset is doing what? Reset is resetting this variable's value to zero. That's it. Click is adding one to that variable and get is getting, returning the value, whatever that is. Okay, so first thing, so this should be defined up here. This line, when you write this, if it's in another class, it will bring all the code here. It will be written up here. If you're working in one file, you write these or you define your class up here. Then in number eight, what we are doing is object name equals class name empty parenthesis. This line creates an object of the counter class by the name of tally. Okay, again, class name with empty parenthesis and you equal the object name so object of this class okay then the first then the line number nine on this object call this method so when it's called tally dot reset it comes here the self knows that i am working for tally click click calls this function twice you get the result it goes in this variable because remember here it's a return value in these two functions nothing is being returned in this get value function something is be being returned and since it's being returned you need to store it in a variable which here is called result so only this get value function is being stored all the other functions are not because they are not returning any then the same and when you run it you'll see the result like this you can add click statements here click statements here and see how your output can differ okay so again recap public interface is which task the class will perform which methods you will need what are the parameters those methods will need to receive this example they receive nothing like all the three functions have no input 
parameters. Hence, only the cell. Okay. If there were more parameters needed, you would put a comma. You put those parameters here. Close your parentheses. Right? We will see those examples as well. 